Hello, welcome to today's video tutorial. Today we will deal with editing stairs. First, I will make a classic, surveyed staircase, and then I will modify it to a modern staircase with a supporting structure and a glass railing. Let's see how we can do this. First, I activate the floor plan view and draw the stairs using the pre-drawn polyline created from the survey. In the building menu, under the stair menu item, you can find various stairs commands. I will use the stair by treads command, since any individual stairs can be created with this. It is particularly suitable for modeling existing stairs. I select the stair by treads command, then on the right side I have to select the drawing method, rectangle, polygon, etc. Here I choose the internal point of chain command. Then I click into the pre-drawn steps. After the first click, I have to enter the height of the steps. I will accept the set 150 mm, and then I will change it afterwards. I continue to click on the steps one by one. Be careful not to click twice on the same step or skip a step. When I get to the end, I close the command with enter key. The stair is ready. Let's see it in 3D view. The stair must be modified because it does not reach the ceiling. So I go back to the floor plan and click on the staircase and then select the pencil icon. By choosing the stair geometry, I can adjust the height of the steps even individually. This may be necessary for surveyed stairs, since many times the stairs do not have the same height of steps. In this case, the steps are of the same height. So you only need to adjust the height of the steps from 2700 mm to 3000 mm. After pressing the apply button, the program recalculates the height of the steps. In the next step, I click on the support tab and change the tread material. I will then close the stair property dialog. Let's see the result of the modification in 3D view. The stair reached the top of the slab. In the next step, I will add a railing to the right side of the stair. To do this, I first create a new railing style. I activate the floor plan, then right click on the stair menu, railing command. In the properties dialog, I create a classic railing style from the steel railing style. Here I will need a handrail balusters, and columns at the junctions. I turn off the panels and bars, and balusters by big steps options. Let's start setting the handrail properties. I click on the handrail button and set the cross-section profile. I replace the circle profile, so I choose the symmetrical profile 1 from the library. The width and height should be 60 mm. I adjust the material of the handrail to match the material of the steps. It is worth clicking on the update button. The shift vertical value will be 950 mm. I set the reference point of the profile to the bottom, so the handrail will be located at the top of the balusters. I continue working with the balustrades. I turn on the primary balusters option and then modify its properties. I choose Symmetric Profile 1 from the Profiles Library. The width and height should be 50 mm. I want to see the pattern of the balustrade, the vertical lines, outside, so I rotate the profile. That's right. 
I still need to change its material to white. Then I set the distance between the balusters. The figure help us to understand the changes. This shows that the D parameter is the clear spacing between balusters, and the S parameter is the distance between the centers of balustrades. I set the clear spacing to 150 mm. As we can see in the figure, the bottom of the balusters is not connected to the stair, so I turn on the aligning the bottom of balusters to staircase option. I choose a slanted end for the top of the baluster, so it nicely follows the line of the handrail. I select a unique column for the nodes. I place these columns as objects. There are pre-made columns in the library. I have already downloaded a suitable column from 3D Warehouse, I choose this one. The primary columns are shown in the figure. Their properties must be modified. The lower and upper ends of the column should be horizontal, and the bottom of the columns should be adjusted to the staircase. I need to move the primary balusters 100 millimeters to the left of the path. So that's fine. I move the last baluster minus 200 millimeters from the end of the path to make space for the railing to be placed on the upper level. The bottom still needs to be adjusted. I move it down 100 millimeters. The last baluster is in place. Now I move the first baluster to minus 60 millimeters from the beginning of the path, so it is at the beginning of the step. Now all we have to do is move the handrail and balusters so that they are in the center of the columns. First, I move the balusters minus 100 millimeters from the path, then the handrail as well. I'm done with the new railing settings, which have saved to a new railing style so that it's available in all projects. This way I can easily use it in other projects when creating the stairs. Now I will place the railing. For this I choose the stair. By clicking on the pencil icon, in the property panel I select the railing, then the railing automatically added on right side option. I select the previously created railing style, classic railing from the drop down menu. This completes the railing on the stair. As you can see, I still need to modify this because one of the columns is rotated. I click on the handrail on the floor plan. It appears that there is an unnecessary node on the path of the handrail, which caused the problem. I delete this and the column returns to its place. I still need to modify the height of the primary balustrades. This should be 960 mm. I am ready to design the classic staircase. Now I'm going to put a railing on the slab upstairs. I return to the floor plan and choose the first floor. I set the visibility of the ground floor. The level marked with a green tick is the active level, and the visible level is marked with yellow light bulb. Here I will place the same classic railing. By clicking on the railing command, on the left side I select the previously created handrail style. Then I draw the path of the handrail and close the command with enter. The handrail is ready. I won't need the columns, so I'll modify the handrail. I turn off the balusters by big steps option. I will then adjust the height of the handrail and primary balustrades to 1100 mm. I can also save this as a new handrail style.
I move the railing to the edge of the slab using the offset command, and then I also move a node. Let's see the result in 3D view. Now I'm going back to the ground floor. We can see that the space under the stair has been formed. I want to close off this space with wall. I return to the floor plan and draw the path of the wall under the stair. I am done with that. Let's see this in the 3D view. We see that the wall is finished, but the stairs did not cut it. I have to set the wall cut in the stair property dialog. The wall cut can be selected on the support tab. Here I choose the all floors option. After rebuilding the model, the stair cut off the walls. I completed the first part of the task, the design of the classic staircase based on a survey. In the second part of the video, we create a modern living room. To do this, I'm going to turn off the classic style furniture and convert this staircase to a modern style floating staircase with glass railing. I return to the floor plan, and using layer warp command, switch off the layer containing the classic furniture. To see the change, I rebuild the model in 3D. After that, I will only deal with the stair. I will make the staircase transformation simply by using the stair menu, convert to floating staircase command. Select the appropriate support structure from the style list on the left side. Then I click on the walking line of the stair. Let's see it in 3D view. The program replaced the white concrete body with this black metal support structure running in the middle. I delete these walls, as they will not be needed. Let's look at the properties of the stair support. I go back to the floor plan and click on the stair support line. First, I want to modify the floor plan path. I click on the blue line and insert a new node. I click on the pencil icon to view its properties. On the first tab, I can set the floor plan representation of the support structure, and on the second tab, the support structure itself. I can choose its cross-sectional profile and its material. I can also choose from different objects for support. Various stair supports are stored in the library. I continue to work by modifying the railing. I'm going to create a glass railing. I click on the railing, and then click on the pencil icon and I change the properties of the railing. In this case, columns and railings will not be needed. I will only work with the handrail. With the handrail, I use the insert button to create another row, and thus the glass railing. First, I restore the cross-sectional profile of the handrail to a rectangle. Then I change its width and height to 50 mm. I add a new row with the insert button and modify its properties as well. I will also need a rectangular profile. Its width will be 6 mm and its height will be 1200 mm. We can see that it doesn't look right because it should be under the handrail. The top point of the profile must be set as the reference point. This will snap the panel into place. The panel material still needs to be set to glass. I click the refresh button to see the change. The distance from the path must also be set, which is 0 millimeters. 
then the glass panel snaps into place. We can see in the figure that the handrail must also be moved. I click to the first row and move the handrail 17.5 mm from the path. I want to place the handrail on the glass panel, so I set the vertical offset to 930 mm. I am done with that. I save this new glass railing as a new style that will be available in every project. I will show the change in the 3D view. As a final step, I will modify the upstairs railing. I go up to the first level and in the railing properties panel I select the new glass railing style and activate it. The 3D view shows that the height needs to be adjusted, so I click on the rail and change its relative height to 170 mm. I adjust the length by moving the node so that these limits connect to each other. Let's see the result in the 3D views. Let's see the first floor, and then we will look at the ground floor as well. I turn on the modern furniture layer on the floor plan and rebuild the 3D model. We can see that this modern staircase is nicely formed. This is how I can easily make a modern style staircase from a classical style staircase. This concludes today's video tutorial. I hope it was useful for you. Thank you very much for being with me today.